Hello there, it's me, Richard Herring. Welcome to Richard Herring's Desk Squared Theatre Podcast. My guest this week is Simon Brodkin, a.k.a. that means also known as Grandad Lee Nelson. Uh, if you enjoy these podcasts and want to help us make more, please go to www.d.rip slash Richard hyphen Herring. You can donate £3 a month. Uh, all that money will go to making more podcasts. And in return, you'll get backstage interviews. You'll get my stand-up shows uh, to download. Uh, you'll get entered into prize draws. You get all sorts of malarkey. It's well worth it. Go and have a look. Uh, that would be lovely. Uh, and uh, But it'll still keep on going out for free because we're nice guys. That's the kind of guys we are. You can also buy my books, uh, Emergency Questions and Christmas Emergency Questions. Uh, I just held them up for people listening in audio. <laughs> uh, and uh, go to gofasterstripe.com where there's loads of brilliant possible Christmas gifts. Uh, not just my stuff, but loads of fantastic uh, comedians do support Go Faster Stripe if you can. They're doing a lot of fantastic work for uh, underground comedy. And also I'm on tour with my show Oh Frig, I'm 50 in spring 2018. If we get that far, go to richtown.com slash gigs. Anyway, let's watch... Prankster extraordinaire, Simon Brodkin. Let's see if he pranks me. I hope not. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. Please welcome a man who this week was belittled by a scaffolder. It's Richard Herring. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello, I'm, uh, I'm Richard Herring. Welcome to Richard Herring's Let's Square Theatre Podcast. I was hanging out with Ubercorn uh, from uh, the Go Jetters. He's, uh, he's like a, a disco unicorn who uh, makes the world revolve. Uh, and uh, he calls it Rahulastam, so I don't know if that's going to catch on. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm just telling the audience I'm living in the countryside, I'm covered in dirt. The honest dirt. I've got an axe now. I've bought an axe. Because uh, I don't like paying for energy, which is why I recommend you uh, use my bulb. Uh, but like, I, ca I still have to pay for wood, right, don't I? When I've got, my, I've got a proper fireplace in my house. So I bought an axe so I don't have to pay for wood. I'm just going to go and... This is just out there growing in the, the fields and stuff. I'm just going to go and chop some off. Uh, I've kind of cut myself quite badly. I tried, I tried to uh, break up a pallet the other day. Hard than it looks, uh, and uh, and with an axe, it's really difficult. Don't use an axe for that job. That's what I'm learning out in the country. And yes, I was, I was. Uh, I, it's very polite out in the countryside. I live in Hertfordshire now, but I, I had two examples of road, very angry road rage uh, this week. I was in uh, Waitrose uh, car park. So you don't expect to get in road rage there, right? That's a polite place. I saw a car pulling out. I thought oh, I'll just pull in there. I pulled in there. Another car wanted to pull in there as well, and then they went, "Oh, hey, we were going in there." There were literally like five spaces within two feet of this car. So it wasn't like we'd got the last one. And then they went, you, can, you get out, you've got to go. I said, no, I was here first. And, no, I and then they called me a cock, which I do not expect in, in Waitrose. That's not part. <laughs> and then I was driving down my local road, which is kind of everyone parks at the side, so you can only get one lot of traffic down. And I, had a, I did it like it was about a 100 metre stretch and there was nothing coming. So I pulled out to overtake all these parked cars. And then a scaffolding lorry came the other way. And rather than waiting, as it would be polite, he, they just drove forward so, so that I, we were then... At a, we, it was a standoff with me and some scaffolders. And the scaffolders going, <laughs> and going... And literally going like that at me. And I literally hadn't done anything. I'd, I'd, I'd been, I was in the right. Uh, and so I took a photo of the front of their van. Because <laughs> I, uh, I thought, you know, I can probably mention them in the podcast in the name of... <laughs> And I could get everyone. I could get everyone to ring them up and tell them they're rude. <laughs> My wife told me I, sh I shouldn't do that, so I, uh, I, I kind of. <laughs> but I might do. Oh, so they belittled me. They were going, they were going like that, and I'd done nothing wrong. Felt very bad about it. But I don't know if you've ever, been, if you've ever been belittled by the scaffolder. It's a new emergency question. Look out for it. So. Um, <laughs> Anyway, my guest this week, I hope he's backstage. He was just trying to brush his teeth with the child's toothbrush. And that is just one of the things <laughs> I may talk to him about now. He's probably best known for his appearance in the morning after show, which was uh, pretty bad this morning. Rich, not Judy, knockoff from uh, 2000, <laughs> 2000, which had Simon Amstel in it as well. Remember it? 
That's what he's best known for. It's Simon Brodkin, ladies and gentlemen. Simon Brodkin. Hopefully. Is he ready? He's brushing his teeth. Oh. He pranked, he pranked me. He pranked me. Hello, lovely. Come and sit down. Pull up a microphone. How you doing? I'm good. I'm uh, pretty... Pretty fresh breath. Yeah, you're happy, yeah. And I'm happy. Yeah, you like to you like to brush your teeth just before you come on stage. I do. I don't like to tell people about it. No, but that's why. That's <laughs> that's why. Yeah, uh, you know, you have to be careful when you prank other people. Other people will prank you. That's what I've learnt. I don't know if you call that a prank. It's a prank. I'm the greatest <laughs> hoax. Call that stabbing a fellow comedian <laughs> in the back. <laughs> <But> <laughs> so, well, do you remember the morning, the morning after show? I do. It was uh, original. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I do remember the morning after show. Yeah. Um, the first time I met Simon Amstel was uh, in um, uh, Hills Jago's club. I can't think of the name of it now. The Muse Moose. The Muse Moose. Uh, and he was on, and he came up very excited and said, I was a massive fan of this morning, Rich Not Judy. And we're doing the same. We've decided <laughs> to copy that show and do it. Um, uh, and he'd asked me if I had any advice. Since then, he's got a lot cooler. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't reply to my emails. We always gave him good advice. Oh, yeah, that's it. To become cool. Do you remember it? You, you were Lee Nelson. I, on I do remember it a little bit. Yeah. I'm, I'd rather not talk about it, but um, <laughs> but with that and the toothbrush, I think we know which way this interview is going to go. Um, <laughs> it's a child. It's a child's toothbrush. <laughs> it was a kid's toothbrush, and I did the morning after show. Now the morning after show was uh, it was it was um, it was it was Simon Amstel hosting and Lee. Um, uh, me as Lee had a little role, and it was it was great. It was was Roland great. Rat on it really? There was a, in, on Wikipedia it says, and this can't be true because it says Roland Rat was on it. It says that Big Daddy was on it. I think um, Simon Amstel might have edited that in okay. hindsight to make yeah. the show grander. <laughs> Big Daddy had been dead one. certainly. Big for Daddy a few wasn't years. on it. Big Daddy wasn't on it. <laughs> No big dad. Was Roland Rat not on it? Roland Rat I didn't see, but I okay. imagine he, him and his entourage would have kept separate. <laughs> um, so I met you, I think, the first time in Swansea. Possibly the first time I met you. Okay. We did a gig together in a students' union. And it was a big day for me because it was a day I booked into a big bed and breakfast in Swansea. And it, they didn't have a separate bathroom, but the toilet was in a, in a cupboard in the, in the bedroom. <laughs> I mean, not even with a door on it, just like the, in the little alcove there had once been a cupboard, there was a toilet. Uh, and um, you, were, you were on with me, and I, I went back to the... You, you said, I'm driving home tonight. So I went back to the bed and breakfast, got my stuff, and didn't sleep in that room, and you drove me back home. Oh, do you remember you that? you shat in the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, but we, do you remember this, this car journey? I don't remember. I've got a, I'm going to preface everything by saying I've got a very, very <laughs> bad memory. I don't even remember brushing my teeth with a kid's toothbrush. But <laughs> no, I've got a very bad memory, but I, I don't, so I don't remember that. The but car that journey, nice on the car thing. journey on the way back, we were talking, and I was talking your ear off. And we went through some roadworks at 70 miles an hour. Now are we? <laughs> yes! Yes, this man cost me three points. Yeah. <laughs> um, and still haven't paid for petrol money, but there we go. I'll give you a free copy of the emergency questions. <laughs> Thank <book>. you. <laughs> petrol was cheaper back then. It was a long time ago. Uh, so... Well, look, let's get, let's get straight into the, uh, the, the more topical aspect of what's been happening with you. Uh, the, the, well, in the last two or three years, you've been sort of doing quite high-profile... Like, pr- I mean, they're, not, they're more than pranks. They're kind of... It's like situationalist comedy where you're char- you have various characters. You do Lee Nelson, of course, and uh, Jason Bent, the footballer. Which Is that how it started? Um, the first one was with Lee. Was it? Yeah. So what was the, what was the first one you did? Um, I gave someone a lift back from Swansea. <laughs> uh, no, the first one was um, stealing my own DVD. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, um, yeah. In uh, HMV at the launch of my DVD, um, which you can still buy. <laughs> um, and I thought what I would do was, uh, you know, as Lee, as Lee would do, Nick my own DVD from HMV and um, I, I, I kind of thought that if I did it with enough commitment and enough uh, um, you know and went through with it that if I ran onto uh, Oxford Street that there would probably be coppers right. <laughs> that would eventually come so that's it we had hired we would try we were that's it the idea was to be a little bit naughty with it it's all coming back now um, and um, uh, to be a little, so we've got we've got a um, 
I think we'd got a police officer, someone to look like a police officer. We'd got someone to dress like a copper. Yeah. And um, I was going to do, we told him we were going to do a bit of, I was going to steal DVD and it was all going to be very funny. What I didn't tell him was, uh, or I don't know how many other people actually told, was that I was going to go ahead and carry on with the full commitment of stealing the DVD. It wasn't just going to be a wacky little stealing a DVD and we get a little picture with the, with the police officer. I took the DVD or several DVDs and pegged it out onto the street and realised that if I did, as, as you do if you steal a DVD from HMV, eventually a real copper <laughs> will come calling. Right. And that's what happened. And it was, uh, I was running up Oxford Street going, it's my, it's my DVD, you can't be done for nicking your own DVD. Um, which of course you can be done, doesn't matter. <laughs> no matter whose DVD it is. Otherwise you could just so go and steal them all and then sell them yourself. You get, exactly. Which is what I would do. So <laughs> I can luckily buy most of mine in the pound shop and then, then you can sell them for 10 minutes. <laughs> right, that's what we're doing yeah. after the yeah, show. Okay. <laughs> um, um, and so we ran up and down Oxford Street and real coppers came along and then we had this situation where it was... I, 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 I wish I had a better memory. Uh, <laughs> um, we had the coppers who were... I was properly floored by these coppers and then the other copper, they thought he was a real copper, but he was just like, I'm just pretending to be a copper. And I'm like, I'm just pretending to nick my DVD. And these coppers were, were, were and, and there was a whole, because everyone got out their phones and they thought I was really being, properly being done. And yeah. I sort of half was being done. And that was the first foray into, I guess, mixing. <laughs> Um, a, a, a comic, a comedic situation clashing with the real world yeah, yeah. to have real world consequences or, as you could say, dicking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is, but it, it's kind of exciting when there's that unpredictability to it. Um, well, I guess I mean, there which always is, is with, when with, you with all these things. I mean, there's um, the unpredictability... I mean, the most recent one with Theresa May where you, I, you know, I don't know if you're going to tell us how you managed to do these things, and you probably don't want to because you hopefully planning to do it again. <laughs> but you so managed to get to the front of the Tory party conference and hand her a P45. Were you not scared you were going to be shot by... <laughs> I was scared I was going to be shot. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That one, I don't normally worry about my own personal safety. Um, but that one, I was a little bit <laughs> tense yeah. as to what the lines are and what the rules are and what the rules of engagement are yeah. um, and, and I had to be very careful you know I yeah. had to pull back on my initial idea which was to knock her out <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's a lot it's, it takes a lot of balls to do something like that surely I mean like that's or just yeah, I, I guess well, it does. Really, people, really say, people, say it, <laughs> people say it does, I, I, um, and I guess it does, but to, to me it feels like, you know, the, 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 the stepping onto stage or just doing a stand-up shit, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, um, it feels a bit more natural to me. I think I might be... I mean, did you know you were going to get that far, though? Were you, were, you sort of, were you sitting at the front anyway, or did you walk in from the back and, and just... Because you sort of would imagine you'd get, get spotted 15, 20 metres away and just taken away at least, you know, someone tackled I you. I didn't know, that, like all these things, when you go and do things in the real world, you're never sure yeah. what stage you're going to get to and how far it's going to gonna, gonna go and whether you're actually going to be able to do it and that's the fun of the fair yeah. and that's what makes it exciting <laughs> and I think that's what people like about it when it does work because... Yeah. It, there's a lot of chances that it wouldn't work or it shouldn't work or can it work or how do you make it work but it, when it works it uh, feels yeah. good how did you make the letters fall off the thing at the back? <laughs> um, <laughs> magnets <laughs> uh, they that. were fridge magnets I mean, if that had happened at the open the door. if that had happened at the same time as you were doing that would have been really freaky wouldn't it if, you'd man if it just, she had such a bad day. did you feel a bit sorry for her afterwards I think that almost so many things happened. Yeah, I mean, speech. when I, obviously I was, um, I was carted off. Um, <laughs> well, at first I wasn't carted off. I, I, I we, we, on the on the day, you know, the, I, I thought my highest chance of getting as close as possible to her would be to look and sound and feel like I absolutely fitted in. Yeah. And um, the so I had my best 
Tory boy look on. Um, I whiffed of arrogance. <laughs> <laughs> and I had the glasses, and I had the shirt, and I had the cufflinks, and a lot of it's in the detail, yeah, and yeah. the right tie, and the right look. And the thing is, you were under 65, though. That would immediately... I'd have, said, <laughs> I'd have been in the door going, why are we letting this guy in? He's clearly <laughs> not a Tory. <laughs> so so I, was, I was at the front, and I, met, I, you know, I, 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 I can tell you a bit about the, the before, but I'm there, and I hand the P45, and lo and behold, she took the P45. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it would go that far, but... <laughs> She took the P45, and obviously I'm thinking, okay, job's done. <laughs> yeah. um, let's get ready to be bundled over and uh, dragged out by a lot of angry security people. Yeah. And instead, I got a light tap on the shoulder, <laughs> and I was just asked if I could kindly sit back down. <laughs> And that's when I thought maybe I fitted in a bit too well here. <laughs> and that they assumed I was some aide who had handed her a last minute change to her speech. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. And um, I was thinking, I'd, stunt done, I kind of don't want to listen to the rest of her speech. <laughs> <laughs> Can someone please arrest me, please, come on. <laughs> and so that's when I, I moved into the, the Boris section yeah, yeah. and turned to Boris and went, Boris, 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 you told me to give it to her. Why aren't you backing me up, man? And then security kind of did think that maybe that wouldn't actually happen. Um, and, um, and that's when they realised that something was up and even though I looked the part, I shouldn't actually be there. Yeah, yeah. And that's when I was, um, I was dragged out and to choruses of... Um, I think it was scum, 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 scum. <laughs> it's, I mean, but what's astonishing is, you know, that, that if you had had ulterior motives for that, I mean, presumably you were searched, uh, you went through metal detectors and stuff, did you or not? Or yes. Yeah. Um, so you wouldn't have been able to really cause any harm? I would have had, no, I would have had to be pretty damn good at origami to create <laughs> the weapon. Get uh, <laughs> Um, no, you're absolutely but... searched. You're searched. Um, you go through an airport, you know, <laughs> style security with the liquids and the yeah. and the bag search and the body search. Blow dart. Uh, you could have had a blow dart. A blow dart, obviously. That's how I had it. one. I missed. I hit the letters. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so no, I, I couldn't have. Her, her safety was never yeah. in question. But I, it's, it's well, you know, you could have. I mean, like, I'm, I'm not saying you one could have. If somebody had gotten there, and it's quite terrifying, is what I'm saying. That the security's that bad. You could at least, you could have got there and at least, uh, you know, punched her. <laughs> See, I, I would defend their security. I'm, right. I, I'm going to because I don't think I ever put her under physical threat or any harm. And in fact, she no. said in an interview that I heard later that, that she never felt any threat. And I, I think that um, I didn't have a weapon. No. I didn't have, you know, something I could throw at her. I was never intending, I never advanced towards her in a menacing way. No, no. And ultimately what I did wasn't illegal. And it's, you know, and, 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 and even my very presence there, you can argue, should I be there? Should I not even be allowed to be there? Well. I think it's quite good that we live somewhere where, you know, a prankster can yeah. still attend an event with a high-profile person isn't booted <laughs> out on charges that he might do something that might not amuse some people. Yeah. Well, it is until, <laughs> until somebody takes it too far. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of... I mean, there's a video of you being bundled into the police van afterwards. Yes. And the police seemed quite annoyed with you. Were they, or were they being jocular with They're you? They're always annoyed with me. Yeah. <laughs> what is their problem? Um, except, no. Um, <laughs> no. That was my stag dude, and she wasn't a real police officer. Um, she was very happy to see me. I was, no, so, um, yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah, but when you, you know, the, the, I, got, um, I got bundled off when they finally realised that, you know, I, I shouldn't be there. Yeah. And um, got taken, as I was being taken out of the auditorium, I, I, can't, I don't know how many members of the press followed me. It was quite a surreal and, and quite fun moment. Yeah. You see these, these, these melees, these press kind of frenetic hives 
and I was at the centre of one. <laughs> and I was thinking, don't you want to kind of listen to the Prime Minister? She's still talking. <laughs> um, and I got taken back, and, 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 and security were dragging me out, and this bundle, I don't know, about 40, 50, 60, but I don't know more, were, were, were all following me. And it was quite funny, because I'm walking forwards, they're taking me to the security area. And these people, they're walking backwards in order to film me and take pictures of me and ask me questions. And when you walk backwards, big disadvantage, you can't see where you're going. Yeah. And these journalists were dropping like fucking flies <laughs> as they were knocking into pillars, bins, <laughs> doors. <laughs> and I just, poof, there goes another one, poof, another question unanswered. And, um, and it was this crazy melee until they took me into the, the comfort, it felt at the time, of this, of this sort of police, the security check. Yeah. And they closed the door, and it was like, you know, when you close the door and a get howling gale, right. and suddenly all the questions and the, and the, and the, and the snapping and, the, and, and stopped. And, um, and then there's, there's, there's this, there's, which often happens after a, uh, a, a stunt, there's a, a, a strange calm. Um, and partly because the police who are now involved often don't know what you've done. They weren't there. No, They've please. been taken. So these G4S security guards took me, dumped me in the police zone, and they've got me looking like this posh Tory boy being dragged out. They can probably hear echoes of scum, scum, <laughs> And then getting plopped into this room. And, so, and then I'm surrounded by, I must have been five or six huge armed, and I mean armed, very armed. They've got the machine guns yeah. and they've got the things and they're looking, they're looking menacing. Um, but equally, they're looking at me thinking, hmm? <laughs> um, really? This, is, this wasn't what we were trained for. Um, so, and, and they don't know what is going on. They know that I shouldn't, you know, I've, I've done something wrong, yeah. but they don't know what. And there was there's this sort of tension because no one knows whether I'm in lots of trouble, not a lot of trouble, quite a lot of trouble, what have I done? And um, eventually this, the, the, this, this one copper comes up to me and just goes, uh, big fun of your work, <laughs> But I think this time you might have gone too far. <laughs> You're about to be in serious trouble, pal. And then goes back to the serious face. They can't be seen to be fraternising with yeah. the, the, the criminal. And so I'm there thinking, OK, I'm now in lots of trouble. Um, and you can always tell the rank of an officer. I've learnt this by spending a bit too much time in the company of police officers by the sort of aura that comes with them and the, and the, and the gravitas and the, the way they get treated by the other, the other police officers. And I knew someone important was, was around because <laughs> suddenly everyone went more serious and the, the postures get more upright and rigid. And this lady in her 50s with the sort of the non-uniform, so you already know you're dealing with either someone very high up or... Yeah. Not a police officer. <laughs> you've, got, you've got a sense of yourself. <laughs> and so um, she, she, she came along, and um, I knew she was pretty damn high ranking. She flashed her badge, which is, everyone wants to go through that. You only see that in the movie. She flashed her metal badge in a little leather case and then puts it away, and she was looking like she's got me. She's got my balls. She's, she's about to do me here. So she goes, uh, Right then, how do you. Uh, how'd you get in then? And I just said, um, I applied. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you applied? I applied through the Conservative Party website. <laughs> <laughs> and her face is just changing expression from I'm gonna nail this little fucker to I'm not sure what I can nail this little fucker with. <laughs> And um, she said, right, well, what name did you use then? Mine. <laughs> <laughs> she wrote that down in her notes. <laughs> Closed her little notebook. <laughs> Went and had a word with another officer. And I never saw her again. <laughs> um, and, and I then felt that moment I wasn't going to be in that much trouble. Shortly after that, I did get arrested. Yeah. Um, and they read your rights. 
and it is tempting to say it along with them because I know it by now, but no. <laughs> um, and that's when they put me in the cuffs and then put me in the van yeah. and, um, and it carried on from there. Yeah, and you're thinking I might be spending the night in jail or I might be... Yeah. Yeah, and did you... Did you, did you, were, you let go life, were you let go mind. over... <laughs> were you let go before the night was over? Or did you yeah, no, they were... They, I mean, they, 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 they put me in the van and again, it's... Um, it's fun to do once, right? Um, uh, twice after the stag do. But um, no, actually, I did make that joke too. They bundled me in the van and they closed the van. I'm in the back. It's a proper, it's a police van, yeah. you know. And I'm handcuffed and, yeah, and, and there's four of them in the front with the mesh. And um, um, we start driving off. And um, I'm not sure. I, 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 you're never quite sure what they're you know, what, what their vibe is. They're now away from the, the, the boss and they can probably think a little bit more than themselves and not have to be seen to a say and do the right thing exactly. And I just said this, they went, are you all right back there? And I did say, it's reminding me of my stag do. Um, and they laughed. And at that moment I realized that um, I was gonna be treated well by them because you're just never sure how you're gonna be treated and how the whole thing's gonna go down. I think, look, being in Manchester, where the Tory party are exactly the most popular party <laughs> and also being in a police van uh, which Theresa May was responsible for cutting, slashing their budget yeah. which is why we only had three wheels. <laughs> um, the, I, was in, I was on home territory and so they treated me really nicely. You know, one of the nicest things a police officer can ever do. This is like, you know that they have arrested you but they actually don't want to arrest you, is they say, uh, do you want me to loosen up your cuffs, mate? <laughs> and if they ever loosen up your cuffs, that means they, and they loosen up the cuffs because they can get a bit tight, so, oh, you're all right. And then we drove, and it seemed like forever we were driving. They said we were going to a local police station. Um, I was worried we were heading for Guantanamo at one stage. <laughs> we were going a long way, and then we got out, um, took me into the, 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 the police station. They start checking you in. And they, you know, they take away your belt and they're about to bundle you into the, 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 the police cell. And they ask you the questions and they measure you and they take away anything you can harm yourself and blah, blah, blah. And then another police officer came around the back of the desk and she was sort of, she, uh, it was something a bit odd. And she had a whisper to the, to the guy who was checking me in, the police officer. And they went back and then I, uh, they, they came back and they just went, you're free to go, mate. <laughs> and that was very funny what you did. <laughs> and um, I got dressed. Uh, <laughs> and um, and it was all, it was, they, they couldn't have been, they couldn't have been nicer. Yeah, I mean, yeah. They couldn't have been nicer. They, I got a lift. Back. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. I got a lift back to the station. Um, and it's better than Uber because they got flashing lights and can go <laughs> the wrong way up one way streets. Um, and they were just, they were, they were nice as pie. They asked for a selfie. Nice. Um, and in the back of their car, they had a police do not cross ribbon. Yeah. So I put a bit of that across my face for a wacky <laughs> selfie. And, um, uh, <laughs> yeah. And I'm still friends with them to this day. No, I'm not, but, um, but they were they they were they were great. They were kind. They got the joke. They realised. Yeah. Yeah. And were you doing it for something, or were you just doing it for the sake of it? Or do you do these things? Because presumably you, can, you haven't got a film crew with you, but it's all being filmed. Or did you have a film crew with you? No. No. I, I wish I did. No. Uh, but it was but all no. film, so I mean, you presumably. Well, it's can... film because it was live on the yeah, BBC. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they were there. Uh, <laughs> but no, I didn't produce that show. So that's so that's just you uh, doing that for the that for the was fun me of it. just doing that for the fun of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's insane. It's it's so good. It's I, it's um. I mean, it's it's amazing when someone like that ends up on the front page of a, a newspaper. Obviously, you're on the front page of all the papers the next day. It's it's. I mean, I just think it. I, I love the way. Uh, you know, it, of, com of that comedy transgressing the boundaries of the stage and becoming this real thing and this improvised thing where anything could happen. It's just so exciting, I think. It was just, it was just a, 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 along with everything else that happened in that speech. I mean, the only way it could have gone better if she'd taken the P45 and gone, oh, oh well, I better, <laughs> better pop off there. <laughs> Which she might have done with release. She might have gone, oh, thank God. Oh, no, 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 You've got a point. Let's do one, people. <laughs>
Yeah, um, um, yeah, she, um, yeah, she took the P45. Yeah. <laughs> she made a joke, I think she made a joke about it. She did, it was a she bad did. joke though. She, she said about, she I'll give it to... Yeah, I'll give it to Jeremy Corbyn, Corbyn this week, but that's Corbyn. just your joke, isn't that's it? She nicked my material. <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't, I've been given if anyone did anything <laughs> illegal that day. <laughs> Joke theft. <laughs> Come with me, madam. But I also the set Blatter one was incredible as well. But with the set Blatter one, that's when he dies. His the picture on his obituary is going to be that money falling down in front of his face, isn't it? Don't, that's that's. Thanks for that photo. Sums. Throwing my stunt in with me killing him. <laughs> when he dies of natural causes. <laughs> oh, thank you. Probably quite soon. Looking at him. Uh, but that's it. Is that image? It, that's his life summed up, isn't it? In that that money. You you went in and and just. Yeah, that was, that was that um, was there's Jason Bent, yeah. um, the, the 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 Premier League football character, the preening Premier League footballer, who had um, who was giving who was giving Sep. Um, this is this is for the um, what was it? This is for the World Cup 2020 bid in North Korea, Sep. <laughs> and then threw the uh, five hundred dollars up in the air. Was it real money? It was real money. Wow, it's expensive. It was, it was surprising. <laughs> Although there, the Swiss police being ridiculously organised, the first thing they did to me was, uh, we have counted. Here <laughs> is all your money back. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't get the joke. They, <laughs> they got the economics of the situation. <laughs> Well, and, well, we might talk about this. I mean, because you've done so many, it's, it's, incre it's sort of incredible that your name isn't on a list that you can apply for a ticket to the Tory conference in your own name and nobody... I know you use different characters' names, That's but true, they yeah. know it's you, right? They know it's, they're not falling for this Lee Nelson or Jason Ben. So it's incredible that you're not, like... The little light doesn't go boop, boop. Yeah. So, like Simon Brodkin's <laughs> is quite an unusual name. Boop, 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 yeah. boop. Don't let him in, <laughs> or near the front at least. <laughs> Jackie hasn't got any money. But you started off as a, a, you were a doctor to begin with. You trained as a doctor and you worked as a doctor. Yeah, that was a more dangerous place for me yeah, to be. That's it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, what I did, I trained as a doctor um, and was a doctor. That always happens at the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've been doing all that stuff. You're now a doctor. <laughs> Woo! Um, so, um, yeah, I did. I did. Were you still working as a doctor, like when you were doing gigs in the early, in the early days of the gigs? Um, no, no, I kind of um, uh, foolishly, whatever you want to call it, um, just went ending with that yeah. and starting with that, and let's see how I get on. Yeah. What what kind of what kind of doctoring were you doing? <laughs> Pretty bad one. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty bad one. No, I was I was a junior doctor, um, yeah. and for, I I did uh, one year of, of of being a junior doctor, yeah. and for that year everyone has to do at least, I think it's at least six months surgery, six months medicine. And I had a quite a, a more varied year. I did a, a course, which I don't know whether you can still do now. It was, it was GP, A&E, medicine, surgery. Right. So that was the year. Because Harry Hill also was a, a doctor, but Harry Hill sort of ha helped discover you, didn't he? Was it, it, it was Harry that had seen um, you earlier? Harry Hill, um, um, yes. He found me in a hospital bed. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, train this man up. No, he did, he, um, yeah, Harry, a fellow doctor, he, um, well, he was at an early gig I did. Right. And then he recommended me um, to his management company. Yes. And, um, and, and so he did, he gave me a foot up, he gave me a great quote to use on my poster in early Edinburgh, and he was there at this mad gig, which was, um, it was, it was, uh, yeah, <laughs> it was in Camden, and obviously, um, it was, you know, when Harry Hill performs on your bill, that's yeah. um, that's payday for whoever's organising that gig. Sure. So I think the room was meant to hold 200. There were like 450 just fucking crammed in <laughs> that room. And it was a hard gig. All they wanted to do was hear Harry. And um, I went on. Someone who was uh, opened, who, was, who had done really well at Edinburgh, I think, the year before, really struggled. Someone else struggled had some lemons thrown at their heads. <laughs> um, yeah, where's Harry? And then I came on and made him laugh. And he, uh, he noted that right. and then kindly recommended me. That's cool. Yeah. And were you always doing characters right from the beginning? Have you ever, have you ever gone on stage as yourself, apart from right now, where you are yourself? Have you been on um, as a stand-up? Would you, would you start as yourself? That I was doing as Lee, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've rarely done McForay's as myself. Yeah. 
So Lee, it was, it was sort of, when it started, it was much more of a kind of caricatured sort of chav character. That's that sort of, and it sort of seems to have developed away from that a little bit. Yes. I guess because also that's, that sort of dates it a little bit, doesn't it, as well? Yeah, um, I never called him a chav, but it was all at the time of the yeah. big chav thing. But yeah, he, the, the, he, he has changed as, uh, you know, he, and, and softened, I guess, as... He has grown up a little bit and he's had to get more responsibilities and he's gone from the baseball cap and the shorts to now wearing a suit. I mean, it is a stolen suit and the <laughs> security tag is still on the arm. But yeah, he has, he has softened and changed yeah. as the years have gone by, yeah. Uh, it's in, uh, you're very immersed. I've been very impressed when I, when I am on the bill with you, which I haven't been for a while, but I remember doing a gig with you a few years ago and you, were at, you went on stage and you did a, a, a set and it went very well. And then you dissected the set. You had someone in the audience and then they came back to the dressing room and you talked about what had, what had worked and what hadn't worked. So you, you were always very focused on... Which a lot of comedians... I'm, not, I'm terrible at that sort of stuff, which is why I'm doing this now. <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> you know, I do the gig and... I'm doing don't, this regularly. Even, like if this I, is <laughs> even if I wanted to tape it, even if I tape my gigs, which I sometimes do, I can't bear to listen back to them, so I just have to hope I remember the stuff that goes on. But you were very focused, I think, very, very early on. Think well, I think when you've done medicine, you've had to, you know, work your, your, your nuts off yeah. for... A, you know, A levels. I mean, I didn't breeze through. I found it damn hard. Yeah. And um, found the, you know, the 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 um, um, you know, medical school is is hard. <laughs> um, had to repeat um, one entire block, but that was partly because I was chucked out of a class. Um, <laughs> for. Yeah, I was booted out, so I failed that section. And what in, in Manchester at the time, if you fail one section, they make you come back and take every fucking other, every exam. Yeah. Um, and it was the um, uh, it was the obs and gyne, obstetrics and gynaecology class. Okay. And um, there's one, <laughs> and I, I couldn't help myself. And uh, <laughs> and they call you out, and you have to sort of perform something in front of the the the, the, the class. And there's a mannequin. Vagina, but it's it's just really weird because it's a vagina and a couple of little leg stumps <laughs> and a little bit of belly. So you feel like you're a fucking deviant just being in the same room as this thing <laughs> before, right? And um, she, you know, I can't remember what we had to do, but the whole thing was patently ridiculous that we were <laughs> pretending that this thing could even be real, and it was, and I couldn't help myself, and I, I, I. I well, when it was my turn, I got a tenner out my pocket, put it inside, <laughs> got my cash card out, put it inside, tapped away on the clitoris, pulled out my cash card and a ten pound note. <laughs> and went down then about as well as it has now. <laughs> um, and got booted out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, in, uh, yes, yes. I'm sorry. Because um, you might have done that in a real situation. That's what they, that's exactly, what they have to exactly, be aware of. Exactly. <laughs> if you do that to that, that might happen. Then that, that it happens. turns out vaginas don't have money inside them at all. <laughs> um, um, so, in answer to your question, work ethic, that's it. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah I, th I think when you have been... That's the system you're used to, yeah. where you, you've got a work card to do that, then that's what, yeah. how I treated comedy. Yeah, you, just, well, you, know. you know, and it worked, I could see, you know, but when I, because I think, I, I came back to st stand-up about 2004, 2005, and that must have been around about the time you were, you'd been doing a couple of years by then, had you, or you'd been a bit... A bit um, two times, uh, um, yes, yeah. let's say. So, you know, but I, you could see, you know, the, I, I started back, I came back to it, having not done it for years yes. and years. Right, and okay. you could immediately see, you know, I could jab, I was on with Jack Whitehall and just went, I remember standing with Jack Whitehall and going, you know, you, in five years' time, you're going to be, you know, I'll never see you again. <laughs> you just so obvious. And I think with you as well, it was obvious. And there was a bit of uh, Al Murray about you in a nice way, because that's a big compliment, I think, in that yeah, you were fantastic the, at the, 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 the um, at the, the ad-libbing off and the riffing off the crowd in the same way as, as he sort of mastered, but in a, as a different 
character, and then you ended up working with Al quite quite early on. One of your first TV jobs was yes. on Al's stand-up show. Well, ske- stand-up and sketch, well, sketch, sketch show. Al Murray's so multiple. He moved away from the landlord to do... It was multiple personalities. Yes, that's right, yeah, yeah, and he, you know, uh, thanks Al, if yeah. you're listening, because he gave me a big break in... Uh, um, and thanks, Harry, if you were listening before. <laughs> um, can we do a shout out? You can, yeah. Brilliant. It's fine. Um, and to the mannequin vagina. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the, um, yeah, so he um, put me on his show, which was, uh, you know, diff- loads of different characters. Yeah. And I did an early Jason Bent, I did an early Nelson, did a load of others, which was great. Yeah, yeah. On yeah. ITV1. It's kind of interesting, and I think it was hard for Al. Which, which I suppose but you've done lots of different characters and that has made it maybe a little bit easier to branch out. With Al, he did so well with that character. It was really... Uh, people didn't kind of want to see him trying other stuff. I think sketch shows are bloody hard to do. They are, they are. You know, I've had a bash at one myself um, with um, Lee Nelson's Well Funny People. And they're, they're hard, they're yeah. hard, they're hard. And, it, uh, and, and as you said, if he's been doing that one single character yeah. for many, many, many years, that's what he's tuned to, that's what he knows, that's what people come to expect of him. Yeah. And so it is hard. Yeah. But, you know, I think it's a lot, and it's a bit like Steve Coogan has sort of accepted the Adam Partridge thing now, I think, after, you know what I mean, he, he kind of went away from it, he was doing other things, which is fair enough because he's very talented. Well, that, but, he, but he's sort of come back to it and feels at home with it, you know. Now he's the same age. It's the same with Al, I think, as well. He's sort of the same age as the landlord now. And it was always a bit weird when Steve Coogan was doing Alan Partridge and was 23. <laughs> and, and now he's the proper age to be yes. Steve. To what be was Alan that Partridge. tour? Out, what was it? Um, Alan Partridge and other less successful characters? Yes, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we kind of got the readings of what he was thinking there. Yeah. But I saw one of you, I saw something, probably your 2006 show in Edinburgh where you did four with this, this the one we did. So that four. was my first show. Yeah, yeah. was that the first yeah. one? And it was, there was a. There was a best, you new, did. best newcomer, best writer's best newcomer, new- mentioned that. It was. <laughs> It's the only thing I've ever fucking won. <laughs> I think you did a sort of quite bold thing in that show, which was quite shocking, in that you had a character who was an Asian doctor character, and, and as you got to do, he was the final character you did. You started, you, you know, you started putting on the, the, the brown paint on your face as you're doing yes. it. And it was a very bold decision to do that. What, what was your thinking behind it? Were you thinking this is a theatrical thing? Or just be thinking? bold. Be bold. Yeah. Um, no, what was I thinking? So that show was called um, Simon Brodkin, Everyone But Himself. Right. And um, so that was me doing a sort of pretend version of a, a character comic. Yeah. You know, opening up, I am the man behind the character. And there were four characters, and in between each character, I would get undressed... Yeah, peel right. off another pair of underpants. So I think that's I had four right. at the beginning, or five, I included myself, I can't remember. And, um, and then start getting the clothes on for the next character that I was about to become, and then give some cod commentary about being a, a stand-up and, the, and, a, and a character comic and the history of comedy and all load of nonsense. And yes, the last character was... Um, uh, was an Asian doctor, yeah. and um, you know the history of that was. I, I didn't even really, for me, think about the boldness. I didn't think about whether it would be something that would. Um, uh, I, for me, it was. An, uh, I pretended to be a pale and pasty white, you know, working class lad, Lee Nelson, yeah. and then I later on in that show pretended I was an incompetent Asian doctor. To me, I, I, I didn't really distinguish between doing one and the other. Yeah. And I knew, obviously, when I started putting on the brown makeup, it got giggles and laughs, and, but I didn't do it to be purposely provocative. Right. I was trying to inhabit the character that I was about to inhabit as yeah. best as I could, which involves clothes, which involves looks, which involves glasses, hair, and skin color changes, because that was the person who I was trying to sure, to sure. mock and poke fun at was a doctor who I'd come across <laughs> in my training. Right. Who, right, let's have a look at this uh, gallbladder, shall we? See if we can uh, take it out. <laughs> and uh, does anyone know where the gallbladder could be located? <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Anyone? No, no. Anyone maybe want to guess for me? <laughs> and this guy was unbelievable. I mean, I remember hours into what should have been basic surgery. 
uh, everyone's there for a long, long time. As a junior doctor, what you're doing is like holding a clamp and just thinking, I wish I wasn't doing this. <laughs> um, and he eventually, after has the blood and the thing and the this, and he just goes, I don't appear to be able to do this operation. <laughs> <laughs> and swanned off, <laughs> left us all with this gaping wound going, right, okay, well, I definitely can't because I'm just holding this clamp, anyone? And then they had to get another doctor to come in and, and complete the surgery. That was the guy we were dealing with. That was, um, he was, he was amazing. And he was asking before, you know, when anyone know where the gallbladder might be? Because he didn't know where the gallbladder was. It wasn't an educational thing. It was him trying to fill gaps in his knowledge. So I was just trying to inhabit that man. Yeah. Um, and did you get any negative reaction? I mean, it was sort of weird, because I think, like, around Little Britain, it all sort of became... That sort of became almost acceptable. Like Little Britain were, were doing uh, characters that were they were blacking up. Yeah, or, and, I, and it was I, sort of all right, and then it became not all right again. So, did people give you a hard time about it, or did? did well, you haven't stopped bullying me about I it since no. I got on the show. <laughs> no, uh, did people give me a hard time about it? I don't, was it contentious? I remember in interviews being asked about it. I always defended it as I have yeah. to you now. I think it's it's very interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, as to whether it is, you know, right or wrong and it raises, but there, there, there isn't a right or wrong, it's to do with the pervading culture, the, the what the general consensus is, yeah. and it's probably not really for me to give the answer, it's probably up to the people who it may or may not be offending. Yeah. And so I'm not gonna say whether it was right or it was wrong, I, I, I defended it at the time, um, and, and things change with, you know, a, a, a pace for good. Yeah. You know, we've seen it recently with behaviour that has been considered, you know, the, the, the bottom line is I, I, I don't know whether I would do it or defend it now, sure. but I did do it and I did defend it then. Yeah. Um, it was sort of, you know, it was, a, it was like a, a frisson-y moment, I think. You know, so that was in, in an Edinburgh show, that was interesting. But, you know, it does. I mean, I think especially because it goes back to that, it's sort of Ain't Half Hotman, where originally, which is probably before your time, but originally, like, Michael Bates played one of the Charwalla guys, and it was, like, properly, like... I think the, I probably approached it naively in thinking, yeah. well, what's the difference between being pale and pasty yeah. and, you know, it's all like that, and being, uh, you know, being pretending I was Asian and saying, you know, hello, how are you? But, but I think... The difference is the history and baggage that it comes with that I probably wasn't that aware of, I hadn't really considered at the time. Yeah. Um, and it's not the same because it has connotations that are come from, from a place that wasn't just making light of it and treating someone in the same way. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I can now, I, I, I can see that you can defend it and also you could attack it. And, and, sure. That's interesting. Well, talking to people who put uh, weird makeup on their face, you also uh, prank John or Donald Trump. Prank, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Would you Would you ever go put on the full orange makeup if you're going? No, sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, what, what happened with the Donald? Because Don again, that was was this before he was president, though. Obviously, wasn't it? Um, it was while he was on the campaign. Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, cause they, yeah had the... So it was a I few mean, again, weeks. this is one way you sort of think maybe there'll be sharpshooters in the distance. Yeah, um, <laughs> and I, I was probably less worried about there was I was worried more about thinking whether the whole thing could happen um, because I really wanted it to happen. It was um, I'd been trying to. Um, it was a Channel Four show that I was actually that was part of a year where Channel Four followed me yeah. and they followed me on a few uh, stunts. And at the beginning of the year, it was over the course of a year, we were sort of who do we want to go for, and. Um, uh, and Donald Trump was the number one by a long, long, long way. And I thought I was going to have to, you know, follow him to America and in an area where I have no idea, where I have no contacts, don't yeah. know anything about how the land lies out there. To then suddenly this moment, we were preparing to go to America and thinking, okay, I'm just going to have to go out there and just see what that, I mean, where do we even, where do we even locate him? Where does he even, you know, because he did a lot of interviews, but he mostly phones them in yeah. from Trump Towers. Um, and um, uh, and suddenly got this news alert on my phone that Donald Trump 
in the middle of his presidential campaign is coming to the United Kingdom to open one of his golf courses. <laughs> um, which, which was like, well, brilliant. He's, he's coming to us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, that, that, that suddenly made the whole thing doable and, uh, and, and feasible. And then it was trying to work out what he would be doing, when he would be doing it, how I can get close and how I can go ahead with the stunt that I eventually, uh, the whole, if you're interested in, in the whole how I did it, it's on YouTube, yeah. um, the whole build up to that stunt. Um, and um, the, 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 the result was it did work and I, <laughs> Uh, scattered about 70 swastika emblazoned golf balls <laughs> surrounding him and all the Trumps as they took it in turns to stand up on this podium with <laughs> these, these golf balls surrounding them. And I, I was, I was um, at, after I threw the golf balls, I uh, went up as I was dressed as someone who works on the golf course as my disguise to be able to get in. And I s announced to the, 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 the gathered media that this was part of the new Trump uh, golfing range. <laughs> and is available from the club shop. And, um, you know, pass these, pass these around, these uh, new uh, swastika and blazing golf balls. So um, I thought it was funny. F <laughs> FBI didn't agree. <laughs> um, but I did manage to do the stunt and... Um, and yeah, that was, uh, they, they all, all the Trump family members stood up because the FBI didn't know what to do. Like, what do we do? What do we do? Uh, you know, the, <laughs> We're not trained Nazi this. golf balls around, uh, around Papa, around Papa, what do we do? And they didn't know what to do. Do you interrupt the great man's speech? <laughs> just take away these golf balls or do you let him carry on? And there's just brilliant moments of the, you know, the FBI kind of stepping in and, and taking one ball and then stepping back out again so as not to interrupt the flow. And he was there for, it was about 10 minutes. Right. Him, Ivanka, the, the, uh, what are their names? I don't know their names. All the Trumplets. Yes. Um, all got up and spoke and surrounded by these golf balls. And were so. you taken away on that one or were you still standing there? <laughs> I was taken away on that one. That yeah. one was, that was actually, I got pretty lucky there because there were so many different um, security services there. There was the Scottish police, there was the uh, counter-terrorism unit, there was the FBI, there was, um, the, uh, there, there were a lot of different people I could have, and luckily for me, the Scottish police got hold of me. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and they were more kindly uh, to me than the American law enforcement, and there was a big battle as to as they wanted me, and the Scottish police were saying, no, we'll deal with him. <laughs> And there was, they had to wait till he'd finished the speech to find out, and apparently he was absolutely furious, and, um, yes. <laughs> um, and uh, um, they, th there was, there was a prop, they were desperate to get their hands on me and interview me, aka waterboard me and leave me for dead. <laughs> um, and the Scottish police, you know, if I'm gonna do a shout out, I'm gonna have to do another shout out to the okay. Scottish police. Okay. Um, because they were, they didn't even they didn't even take me to the station, which was officially. Once I'm there, it's in, I'm in the system properly. Instead, they handcuffed me inside the van, <laughs> and this was a very kind moment. He offered me a sip of his iron brew. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Um, and the, 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 they managed to persuade the American authorities in the end, that they had things in hand, they promised <laughs> to get me out of the country. <laughs> Basically, I think the American police thought that the border between Scotland and England is akin to the Mexican-American border. <laughs> and once you kick someone out of Scotland, they do not fucking well come back. <laughs> Little do they know I could have gone, and I'm back in, <laughs> and I'm back in. So they, they, they ended up, they say, we'll, we'll take him, we'll get him out, we'll escort him out of the country. And I went in a police van, handcuffed, to the airport, um, and they made sure I got onto a, onto a plane. Yeah. Um, and are you worried that you're, I mean, Donald Trump is someone who I feel probably harbours grudges <laughs> and has a list, and yeah. are you worried he might come back for you at some point when he's... Um, I'm when fucking ready for him. <laughs> um, yeah, the, 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 he 
has some fairly unpalatable followers, so yeah. I've heard. Um, <laughs> and the KKK didn't take very kindly to the whole thing. Um, and three bracketed my name, oh, God, which means yeah. outed me as a Jew. Yes. I didn't, I didn't even know. <laughs> like, Mum, I didn't have a mitts for what the fuck. Um, no, so that's what they do. If you ever see three brackets on Twitter around people's names, it's because that, that well, it's now worked yes. as the sort of the people now out themselves or come out in solidarity, even if they're not Jewish, put three brackets around their name on Twitter to show I'm, I'm, I'm with the Jews here. Yeah. Um, and so they, I got a barrage of hate and blah, blah, blah. It's weird the KKK and Donald Trump being. You wouldn't think they, those guys would go together. Oh, so, they so. have, honestly, they've really must changed. Be so annoyed. Must be so they annoyed really made me change their opinion of them after that stuff. <laughs> um, I was willing to give them a go. The burning cross thing, I thought that was just a torch. They always do it in the night. And, um, have you ever been belittled by a scaffolder? Is that an innuendo for something? No, I've been belittled by a scaffolder this um, week. So no, I but I'd no. love to be. They're quite belittling. I quite like scaffolders because they're crazy, right? I've had people work. I'm, I need a scaffolder next year. That's the irony of them, of these guys. Well, it's your turn to belittle them then. I'm not gonna. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not gonna employ that. That I know. I'm. Whew, I could give that. <laughs> Just don't employ any scaffolders from Hertfordshire, and then you're definitely no. Don't do that. What happened? Uh, but is it? They were just. They just were. Rude. They made. They. They made me. Uh, I, they, they, wouldn't let, they wouldn't let me through on the, the, the roads and then made sure wanker signs. the road for your own safety. Don't <laughs> come through here, mate. But I really, what debris. I wish I'd done, because I was driving up and I was, I mean, I was 100 metres from the near, nearest pull-in place and they, were, they saw me coming and then still pulled in and you know, they were 20 metres from, near, from their pull-in place. I should have just, I was quite near my house, I should have just said, OK, and just got out of the car and locked in walked back to my house because I didn't have anything to do. I'm, you know, I'm a comedian, so <laughs> they just said I'm not going. But then they're so crazy scaffolders. I think they would probably just take your car apart or drive over the car or put scaffolding through the windows. Don't you think so? Have you ever had scaffolders at your house? Um, well, they told me I'd get a grilling. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't prepared for this emotional yeah. stuff. Um, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm sure there are some nice scaffolders out there it's who like wouldn't a, belittle them. A nice no, I, have, I think I have had scaffolding at my... Yeah. Um, have I? I'm, um, it's quite, they're all quite crazy because you have to be... be up to, there yeah, you're up really high care. and you've got to, you build your own little thing that you know, it could fall down any second. They're crazy men, you know, and I respect that. I like them. I like the fact they were doing wanker signs at me. <laughs> but I also like the fact that I then took a photo of them and they were going... <laughs> And I could put it on Twitter. I then wrote to them and said, I've got 220,000 Twitter followers. And I could, I could prank you, but I was going to prank them and get everyone to ring them up. <laughs> but my wife told me not to do it. So I didn't, I did, I, did you listen to your wife? Did, she t did your wife ever tell you not to When it comes to, to scaffolding not to and phoning them, yes. That's <laughs> did your wife say, don't go and do that to, to Theresa May? It's, you'll get into trouble. Um, That's what my wife would do. That's why I said, haven't done it. Would she have said that? Yeah. No, she's um, thankfully supportive. Is she? Yeah. yeah. That's nice. Found the right one there. I have. She's a real peach. It's <laughs> <laughs> the 1930s uh, podcast. I'll ask you. And I'll ask you some more, more emergency questions. That yes, was my new it. emergency question. Didn't go as well as I was hoping. <laughs> I thought everyone's been belittled by a scaffolder. This is going to be a great story. Um, mm. What is the? What do you most regret destroying with fire? <sighs> Bloody hell! There's so many options. <laughs> Um, what do I Mostly, I, what have I destroyed with fire? Um, it's hard. I mean, these just, aren't easy I wish questions. these were multiple choice. <laughs> um, what have I destroyed with fire? Wow, I'm just. I, I'm trying to think of something no, I've set yeah. fire to. Well, you might not have done. I, I, I burnt my uh, middle school art folder. I That's what I most. I remember. remember I burnt down a friend's kitchen. <laughs> Suddenly came back to me <laughs> with a toaster. That yeah. with so a toaster, with by, a toaster. By accident. Well, by accident, but yeah. I didn't really. One of those toasters where they know what you need to do, yeah. and it's a bit. Yeah, and I just went for it, and then went back in and went for it, and we were playing on the, we were playing on the computer, and then yeah. the kitchen was on fire. Wow. How about how much damage was done? Um, like all the underneath of all the cupboards wow. on the one side. So Did they need to get any scaffolders in to <laughs> repair it? <laughs> luckily, luckily for them, no. Could be a very small scaffolders. <laughs> Tiny little one, up there. <laughs> See, good question. 
No, it's a good question. I like saying that when I have a good question. Because, you know, it's just reassuring myself. It, was, it is good. It's a good uh, question. All right. I'll ask you another emergency question. I'll ask you a Christmas emergency question, and I hope this isn't offensive to your Jewish heritage. OK. We'll I see. Didn't put, I didn't put any in for any other religions. I didn't even go, you know, what's it like having Hanukkah or something like that. I could have done that, couldn't I? No. I'm, bo I'm boycotting Tesco because they've had uh, Muslims in there. You heard that? They've got Muslims in their advert. People are boycotting okay, Tesco. Okay, that sounds reasonable. Yeah. So. <laughs> and someone did a brilliant tweet, but I don't think it was about that. But it's about nothing annoys the Daily Mail more than Muslims not integrating into the society, except them integrating into the society. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is question forty-five, which you might not want to ask uh, at Christmas dinner. Wasn't Brexit a brilliant idea? <laughs> How do you feel about Brexit? I talked about... I, was, we had, I went round to my neighbours uh, this week, which was nerve-wracking, because, you know, I live in the country, and my wife brought up Brexit. My wife is quite annoyed about Brexit. Uh, and, we, you know, you have that moment, you go, they live in the country, are they all going to be going, yeah, what a great idea. But they mainly were against it. <laughs> uh, how, do, how do you feel about Brexit? Um, I think that remaining is the right thing to do, I think. The general principle, whether you even get into the heavy politics of it, is reaching out and finding commonality with other people yeah. is a lot better way to go than putting up barriers and finding looking for differences. And I think the way Europe doesn't seem to have gone on any wars since the <laughs> EU came about, for me... Yeah. That seems to be a, a thumbs up rather than a thumbs down for that system. But on the other hand, Britain, especially England, is the best. And we don't need anyone else, so... <laughs> Remember the empire? We, so that was we the go long, back to that. That was the long-term strategy. Yeah. It was going to be called the EUK. <laughs> um, all right, this is question 48. There's quite, there's quite a lot of questions about a Christmas carol and a Muppet Christmas carol in this book, and the 12 days of Christmas. Is there a part of you that would actually like to live in the Christmas future where Tiny Tim has died in infancy? <laughs> you say part, I say all. <laughs> There's certain versions of Christmas Carol where I would really like Tiny Tim to die, like some of the film versions. Yeah. I think in the Muppet one, I'd quite like Tiny Tim to be dead in the Muppet one, just because it would be so yeah. bleak. I mean, this doesn't, op doesn't, little frog, doesn't frog often Tiny get said, but Tiny Tim is a massive cunt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who Tiny Tim. I don't even know the tale. Do you not? Do you not even like, know? I thought it was, it was an easy pot shot. Never, I'm sorry, never, Tim. It was, was a good, correct call. Is he, Have you right? never even seen Muppet Christmas Carol? I haven't. No. Is that because of the, Jew, the Jewish it's people aren't allowed to watch it? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that part? Amazing that you've only yeah. just woken up to the sensitivities of what you're talking about. <laughs> Here's another Christmas Carol based question. <laughs> We kill your lord once, and you won't <laughs> stop fucking. There's a good, there's a good, there's a good Christmas Carol-based question. I don't know if I'll find it in time. How many ghosts are there in the Christmas Carol? Three. No, there are four. Because Jacob Marley's also a ghost, but then it says in here, if they say four, go no. Because I'm talking about the Muppet Christmas Carol, where there are two Jacob Marleys, <laughs> so there's five. five. <laughs> but you can't lose. That's a good one. Better watch this podcast. <laughs> Um, I'll do one that is, I'll do, I'll try and find one that isn't for Christians who enjoy the work of Charles Dickens. Um, <laughs> do you think Noel Edmonds has ever spent a Christmas alone? I doubt it. No. Uh, he probably, he's always on the telly and stuff, but I bet one year, yeah. when Noel's Christmas presents just finished and before he kind of got into deal or no deal, yeah. no one was ringing him up. So I, I, I feel to go to a hospital and be mawkish to some lacking, <laughs> lacking knowledge in this area. Had you asked me if there are any Hanukkahs he spent alone? <laughs> you must have Noel Edmonds in, in Jew, Jew, the Jewish... No, Noel Edmonds has definitely not spent a single Christmas alone. Okay, I'll ask you one of... There's some that aren't Christmas-based. I'll ask you one of those. Um, <laughs> that's so bad. Uh, 
Does it ever concern you the name minstrels has a potentially racist derivation? I mean, sure, there were minstrels in the Middle Ages, but is that what Galaxy named the chocolates after? Are you being slightly racist if you enjoy them? I was generally eating minstrels during the, this part of the... Uh, this part of writing the book, and that's why the next question is, why do you think that the experience has shown me that I can't open a packet of minstrels without eating all the minstrels? I still seem to believe on each new occasion that this time I will manage it. Do I secretly know I'll eat them all until I feel sick? Or is it because I'm racist? Or because I want to destroy all racism by eating all the minstrels? Or is my prejudice actually against medieval minstrels? I mean, it raises so many questions. All the minstrels are gone now, I feel bad. I was eating minstrels, I was in my Edinburgh flat eating minstrels. We with Noel Edmonds when you're thinking of the previous yeah, question. Yeah. What do you think about minstrels? Because they're, right? they're, I also think they're, they're evening like... things up with the guilt. They're all black, aren't they? Yeah. So and they're black inside. They they're are. black on the outside. So they're in no way comparable to the awful yeah, black okay. and white minstrels. Okay, cool. That's good. Uh, so <laughs> it's good. It's an interesting question about the the minstrels, minstrels based questions. <laughs> so um, um, what else? Did I, what else? Did I, I was talking about Swansea. You were the doc. You were played a doctor in Absolutely Fabulous, which seems too early for the, you. Must have still been an actual doctor, and you played the doctor. Yeah, actor. that was. Is that true? That is true. Yeah, so was that, that was my first ever thing. Right. And I was suddenly, I can't remember how it came about. It was. Yeah, I was playing a doctor in one of the final ever episodes of Absolutely Fabulous, and um, it was just as hard pretending to be a doctor <laughs> as it was being a doctor. One thing I always remember that was when the difference between publicly funded bodies and privately funded bodies it was at the stark contrast so we, we, we was being filmed in an actual hospital and for part of one of the scenes they needed to shoot in a reception area but this hospital didn't have the reception area that they were looking for they didn't have a proper reception area so I remember talking to them here, over here in the reception area. We've been waiting for this reception area to be built for years and years and years and years. The reception area, we, 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 we can't do it. Within about two hours, the <laughs> privately funded TV company had built <laughs> a reception area that was only meant to be a temporary little thing for that one scene. Yeah. At the end, the pleas from the hospital, please can you keep that for us? <laughs> Because we can actually now use it as our reception area. Wow! It was yeah, it was it was tragic, but that's. Yeah. My kids were born in the hospital where they filmed sliding doors. The bit in the lift with sliding doors. <laughs> Beat that! Both of my kids were born in that hospital. Not even. No, I went trying. into the I went into the lift and pretended I was John Hannah. <laughs> and, uh, and and Gwyneth Paltrow had just gone in. And went, you know what the Monty Python boys say, and then she got off of me, and it was great. <laughs> Uh, do, you like, do you like the Can't film Sliding Doors? Um, yes. <laughs> that is the wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> and well, look, hey, look, we've, we've nearly done all the time. It's been very lovely talking to you. It's very interesting to talk to you. And there's loads more we could have talked about because you've done hundreds more. You've done Kanye West, Philip Green, that was a good one, Philip VW. Which is what's your own personal favourite? Has A, have any of them gone wrong and not been usable? Not, not got anywhere, or, or B, what is your favourite one that has gone off? Um, so, um, I, I, I don't, I probably don't have a favourite. I don't have a favourite. Right. Training with Manchester City, uh, warming up with Manchester City was fun, yeah. just because I support Manchester City. I got, to, <laughs> I got to warm up with them. That was as Jason saying. That's the only one you got punished for, though, as well. You were banned from that one, yes. But you were banned, banned from going to football for the season. Yes, I got banned from all football matches. For um, yeah, all stadia. Wow. So that was that tour written off that year. <laughs> um, so, but that stopped me being able to attend the FA Cup final wow. where we got beaten by Wigan. So, okay. a shout out to the police <laughs> uh, and the judiciary. Yes. Um, um, yeah, I don't have a favourite. They're all fun. They're all yeah. fun to do. And are you still planning to... Are you gonna, I mean, do you just wait a bit until everyone's forgotten that you've done them? <laughs> yes. And then say, all right, I'll do another one. Or have you got any... I mean, don't tell us what they are, obviously, but you got, have you got... Are you hatching more plans? Um, I've got my heart, I guess, set on Kim Jong-un. <laughs> um, Nothing can go wrong with that. And... 
I've got a character in mind, a really aggressive scaffolder at the border. <laughs> um, no, look, I'm always on the lookout, but there's no um, exact planning yeah. and plotting as to what or when the next one is. And have any of them gone just tits up right from the start and you've not been able to do anything, or have they always worked to some extent? One I had to pull out of, it didn't quite work, and that was it, there was only one. Right. Um, what was that about? Can you tell me? No, are you going to do it again? Um, I won't tell you. Okay. Just in case, just in case. Okay. Just in case happens. Because you come out of it looking bad. I was gonna, I was gonna put a whoopee cushion on your seat. And pray, pray, yeah. pray, pray. Then I can be, I can Frank, be bothered. Prankster. Thought that get him. I was gonna go. Just sit down. Don't look down. Just sit down. I was gonna do that. I had it all planned. And then you sit in it. Probably wouldn't work because these are quite soft seats. You'd be spending a lot of time with your. Kids, I've been really you? thinking about how I could get you. And it, the trick is, none of this is real. <laughs> it's all just that audience is just a, a film, a video of an audience, which is why they haven't really been reacting to anything we've been saying. <laughs> I fucking wondered why. <laughs> so I can just kick them, they won't feel anything. Yeah, no, it's absolutely, it's absolutely amazing. Um, well, good luck. I really, I just can't tell you, I mean, you're a fantastic uh, comedian, but I can't tell you how, uh, like, uh, how much admiration I have for the bravery of uh, what you do in the real world. I hope you don't get killed, uh, but if you do get killed, we'll put this podcast out as a kind of tribute. Uh, uh, well, I'll, I'll put a link to this. If you ever shot my The Secret Service, this is going straight up, because think of the hits. <laughs> That's good. Uh, so, um, <laughs> thanks for coming in and talking about that. Absolutely Gentlemen, perfect. Simon Brogan. <laughs> uh, we'll be back. We'll next week in a bit. Don't mind. Thanks for questions. How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>